Hey guys, and in this video we're going to be talking about a piece of software called QLab. Now this isn't really a DJ related video, it's more towards the production stuff with lighting and sound, but this piece of software basically allows you to control lighting, sound, video, MIDI, it's really the ultimate tool for controlling a show. So let me really show you what this software can actually do. First of all, there are several different versions of this software you can get. There's the free version, which I'm using in this video. I thought I'd best demonstrate this version as this is the one probably most people will end up using. Uh, but there's also a pro video, a pro audio, and a pro mini version. And you can also buy the software bundled together. Now this software is quite expensive to buy, but the website does have a feature where you can rent a piece of software for a very small amount of money. So say you're doing a production and you really want to use some more extended features of QLab, what you can do is rent the software for a week. It won't cost you very much and you'll have access to all the professional features in the software. So let's head over and take a look at some of the features within QLab. So here we are in QLab. Now the first thing I have to tell you is this software is only Mac compatible. It doesn't work on Windows. Uh, but yeah, this software is vast. There's so many different things you can do with the software. If I was to do a tutorial on everything, I would be here all day. So I'm not going to give a really long video. I'm sure there are other people on YouTube uh, who you can find who have done videos more in depth in how to use QLab. But let's take a look, first of all, the overall kind of layout of things. We've got controls up at the top here. We can view our inspector, which is this section at the bottom here, which views all the different parameters of the queues. We've got the toolbox here on the left, which is the list of different types of queues we can put into the queue list. We've then got a section here with our active queues, where we can view all the currently playing queues and we can pause them and play them all. Then you've got the option here to reset everything, stop all the queues, and load in uh, queues. We've then got a section here to load to time. And then we've got here a little padlock here so you can lock the software. So say you've finished putting everything in and you start the show, you don't want to have your, you accidentally changing any of the settings while you're trying to run the show. So simply by locking the workspace, it means you can't accidentally change any of the parameters of the queues. Let's leave that unlocked for now. We've also got the preferences here which have got loads of different options for how to use all the software and set up different patches for video, audio, things like that. This software is incredibly advanced in the way that you can use, see, look at all this stuff here. We've got multiple controls for audio and we can also run different audio patches so you can have sound outputting through different sound cards if you wanted to have, uh, say, it coming in through different channels on your sound desk to go through different processing or out to different speakers. So that's the settings, I'm sure you can go in there and find more about it. We've also got here the option to view a queue list on the side. We've then got our big important go button which of course triggers the queues. We've got here the title of the queue that's on the deck uh, and then here we've got a description of what that queue is. And then here is the main section where you put in your queues. So I'm just going to really show you what you can do in the free software. Now we've got different options here for groups of queues so you can trigger an entire folder of queues. So I can drag in audio queues within this group of queues. So when I trigger that one group, it'll trigger all the queues within it. Let me just delete that. To delete a queue, you just press Command Backspace. Then got options here for fade, uh, audio, fade, video, animation, camera, MIDI, MIDI show control, MIDI file, MIDI, MIDI system executable, uh, MTC, start, stop, pause, reset. You've loads of them here. I'm not going to go through what every single one does. Now, if you wanted to use video, you have to get that pro license. Uh, same with using MIDI. If you want to use MIDI to trigger, say, your lighting console uh, via MIDI show control, you would need to have that pro license. But you can get away with doing basic audio stuff without having to get the full version of the software. So let's just drag in an audio track for the moment. So we, to put in a cue, you simply drag in the audio track. You can now see at the bottom in this section here, we've got more information about um, the parameters of the queue. So first thing here in the target, we're going to need to drag in an audio file. I just happen to have one sitting here on the desktop, so I just drag it in and it's now within the queue. So what we can do here is we can change the queue number, so say, oh this, is one point, this isn't q one this is q one5 we can change the number. We can also change uh, the name here, so we can call this audio track 3. We've then got options here for our target, which is the file it's connecting to. Here we've got some times which I'll come on to in a second. Uh, in fact, I'll come on to them now. If we go down here into our inspector, we've got a pre-wait time and a post-wait time. The pre-wait time is the time when you press go, the time it waits until it actually does, does the queue. So let's put a three second pre-wait time. So now when I hit go, you see here, it's doing this pre-wait time before it actually starts and plays the queue. Again, let me just reset this all software. Uh, we can put in a post-wait time 
of three seconds. This will do the same thing, except what it's doing is it's the time it waits afterwards until it goes on to the next queue. That is dependent, of course, on this option here, which is continue. Now you've got the option of do not continue, so when this queue is completed, it won't jump on and start the next queue until you press the go button. You've got an option to auto continue, so the moment you press the go button, this queue and any following queues will start up and the, if they have that auto continue running down here. We've then got the auto follow option, which means once this queue is completed, the next queue will automatically start. And the post wait time here is important for that because it can affect when that next queue starts. We've also got the option here to color the different queues so we can say we want this to be orange to make it more noticeable in our queue list. That track is now orange. And we've got options of notes here we can say something like when actor enters stage left. So that note there, when we click on the queue, we've then got that note up there telling us when we need to go with the queue. So it's actually very useful for giving references for when the actual queues are going. Now, I can't go through everything here because it'll take me forever. But we've got loads of options here with hotkeys, so I can set it to capital H. So when I hit capital H, it'll play that queue. As you can see, and remember we had that pre-wait beforehand. We've also got options for MIDI triggering, which here, as it says, requires a pro license. So you can have a MIDI interface and use... Uh, MIDI to trigger the actual sound cues and you've got the options for time clone and wall clock go more into settings here we can see an actual entire section of the track here we've got the waveform we've got options to play the track a certain number of times or infinitely loop the track infinitely loop the track we've got options for controls here so we can set and start the end times from selection so say we do that that means that this, uh, the track is going to start and stop within those points, so it's only going to play that section of track. Here, this option here sets a loop at the end times for a section, so you can say, oh, I want this section here, let's go this section here to loop. We've got an option to play, rewind, and here's a fade out option. So we can control and put in, so say we want, oh, I want the end, I want it to fade out. So we can create a, a curve for the fade at the end of the track. And of course we've got selections of which outputs you want to use. Then we've got more options here for levels and uh, which outputs you want to be using. As it says here, this requires a pro audio license, so you can only do so much in the free software. And then you've got this final option to trim the audio. So again, we've got lots of other options here. So if say we wanted it to fade out on a queue instead of on a point in the track, we can then set this to be a fade out at any time we want. So here it says drag an audio cue here. So we need to tell it, ah, we want this to be fading out audio uh, cue number 1.5. So we drag it onto this cue and it now says, ah, okay, this fade out is affecting this cue. So now we can go in here, do same things with pre-wait, post-wait, continue times, uh, more options, the triggers. We've then got options here for changing the curve uh, of the fade, which is a nice feature. And then of course we've got levels uh, here so we can make it fade to a particular level or fade out completely. We've also got the option here to stop the target when done so it will stop playing audio track 3 once it's faded out. Sometimes you'll get a little X in the corner here next to the the queue and that means something is wrong in the settings which means this isn't going to work properly as you specified in the setup. So now I've got the setup here let me just get rid of this pre-wait time here so like so. So now we can run this queue and when we want to, we can make it so it's going to fade out just by hitting the go button again. And then we've got that fade out on there. And of course, you can change the duration, the pre-wait, post-wait. It's really customizable to do whatever you want. So again, we've got loads more options here for MIDI show control, all this stuff we can do, dragging video files on and mixing live cameras within the software and animating the video footage. This software is really customizable. I suggest you, if you've got a Mac and you're able to download the software, go to the website, that link will be in the description below. Go and download, go and have a play and see what you can do with the software. It's really useful for any work with audio or video. It's just a good piece of software to have on your computer ready if you need to do something like this. And again, as I say, you can do so much with it that I can't really explain in this video. Uh, so to find out more about that, again, download the software, look at other YouTube videos and have a look on their website. So there you go, that is QLab, a really fantastic piece of software if you're doing anything lighting and sound uh, within production or even live stuff. It's very, very useful. Go check it out, that link will be in the description below. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please come up, rate and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.